So next, what we're going to do is we are going to create the different shapes that mix up this character. And we're going to use those shapes later on to convert them into selections so that we can isolate things such as the hair, the face, or parts of the suit to adjust our paint. First, we're going to start by creating a new group. And I'm going to call this group Color Shapes. I'm going to move this below the line. I always want to have my line on top of everything. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new layer. Make sure that you have the Color Shapes group selected so that this new layer goes on the inside. And I'm going to select B for Brush. And I'm going to make sure that white is in the foreground. So I'm going to hit D for default, which is this icon right here on the top left. X to flip my foreground color for the background color like this. So make sure that you have white. And now I'm going to paint in the hair area like so. Notice that because my line is at the very top. What it does, it hides the edge of the shape that I'm painting right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the outline of the hair. And then I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques to do the same thing that I'm doing right now. Always pay attention to what you are painting. As you can see right here, this part is the neck cover that she's wearing. So all of this is going to be her hair. There's a gap right here. And there's a gap right here and so on. So pay attention for that. Again, I'm quickly going to fill the outline of this hair and I'm going to use my eraser tool to clean that up. Make sure that you paint inside of the line. And if you want to create a straight line, what you're going to do, and I'm going to demonstrate this on the side, is you're going to do a single click on your canvas and then you're going to hold the shift key. And what's going to happen is that whatever you click next, you're going to get a straight line that is going to go to the following stroke. So take advantage of that technique. For example, on this hair strand, I'm going to click right here and now I'm going to hold shift. And then I'm going to use my space bar to move my canvas. And while holding the shift key, I'm going to create a long straight line. I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm holding the shift key constantly and I'm using my thumb to press down on the space bar and moving my canvas. And now I'm going to hit E for eraser. B back to the brush tool. And again, I'm holding the shift key like so. And I'm getting these really long straight lines. I don't have to rotate the canvas or use a ruler like some people do to get straight lines. Now all of this is going to be hair. I'm going to go around this like so. Let me delete this area. And once I'm done with the hair piece, I'm going to hide the line so you can see what I've done. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to accelerate the video so that we can continue. You don't have to watch in real time how I do this hair right here. Now, this is probably the most time consuming aspect of painting this uh, cell shaded style. However, it is very rewarding once it's done correctly. You will also notice why we're using a 50% neutral gray as our background. This neutral gray has a dual purpose. First of all, it helps us see when we create our shapes using white, if we've gone over the line. If you do so, hit E for the eraser and then go back to the brush. All right, so I finished the hair and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the line work so you can see exactly what we have. Now, this doesn't look too pretty, but it doesn't matter because the line 
is hiding the edges as you can see. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this newly created shape and next I'm going to continue with the different shapes that I have here. Now the only problem is that if I for example paint this on a new layer and let me name that layer one hair and then this one is going to be called face. If I was to paint my face shape right here having this white and the hair white, it's gonna cause a little bit of confusion. So as soon as I finish one of my shapes, what I do is I select the layer. So I'm gonna select the hair layer, and I'm gonna to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. Click on Colorize. Now, the way that Colorize works is that the hue always goes back to red, saturation goes negative 25%, and the lightness is not gonna move. So if I was to move this triangle right here to the right, nothing is going to happen. I cannot make white any lighter. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move the slider to the left. And this is how we colorize something. If you want to change the hue, move the hue slider. If you want more saturation, increase it. And if you want less, decrease it. So I'm going to leave it where it was to 25. And I'm going to start with red. I'm going to then continue with the face, paint this face white. Once I'm done, I'm going to go back to hue and saturation, image adjustments, hue and saturation. And again, I'm going to click on colorize, move my lightness slider to the left, and then I'm going to change my hue. This way, visually, I can see the different shapes really, really quick. And we'll use these shapes to select the areas that we want to paint. I will cover that in the next video. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue painting my different shapes and I'm going to speed up the video and I will explain to you why I do certain things like having the background gray and so on. So let's continue. I'm going to use the magic wand, select the inside of the face in my line layer. Then I'm going to go to select modify and I'm going to expand my selection by one pixel. By doing this, my selection is going to go below the line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, fill, and instead of filling this with a 50% gray, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the green color that I already created for the face, and I'm going to fill it with this green color. Then I'm going to go right below where the arm is and select the skin of her hand. And I've decided that now this, instead of being the face, is going to be the layer for the skin. I'm going to change the name and I'm going to make sure that everything is filled up. And I've noticed that I'm missing this little corner right here. And as soon as that's done, I'm going to lock the transparency and I'm going to move on to the next shape. All right, so the process is the same. I create groups based on the shapes. So for example, the head will have its own group. The body suit will have another group. And then I'm gonna put each leg and the arm in another group. Then what I do is I create a layer one at a time. I'll do, for example, the hair. I'll fill that with white. Once I'm happy with the shape, then I change the hue and saturation so that I can create multiple layers with different colors so I can visually select what I want to turn into a selection. What we're going to do with these shapes is that we are going to turn those into selections. So when we get to the painting process of the entire character, we have the ability to select a specific area, let's say the face or the hair or her hand and so on. And then we go back to the painting layer and then we can concentrate on that specific place. So I start creating all of these layers so I can eventually use them as selections. It is very important, however, to name them correctly. What I'm going to show you next is how to use your right mouse button or the control key to determine where the layer is, and I'm also going to show you how to convert a layer into a selection so that we can use that to isolate specific places. 
So what we need to do next is we need to duplicate our color shapes group and collapse that duplicate group into one single layer by dragging it to the create new layer icon. And if you go to the layers palettes options, instead of merge down, now we have a merge group. When you do a merge group, what's going to happen is going to take all of the contents from that group and it's going to merge it into one single layer. So if I hide my color shapes, Notice that we have one single layer right here with all of the colors. This is going to be the layer that we're going to paint on. And it's also going to be the layer that we're going to use to create our shadow. So I'm going to double click on the name and I'm going to call this one color layer. I'm going to lock its transparency pixels and I'm going to go to hue and saturations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on colorize and I'm going to make this whole thing white. Excellent. So now we're pretty much ready to paint our character.